Hi, my name is Paweł Spechalski and let's do the news. The topics for today are as follows. I've made a list so I do not miss anything. First of all, Ever Sky has announced like a week ago that they will be introducing new over-the-air protocol. The previous one, let me get the name right because I don't want to lie, the previous one called ACC. ST is apparently not good enough and now we will have in the future of course if you upgrade of course something called the access the access is the improvement over the previous 2.4 gigahertz protocol that it's supposed to be a faster with lower latency and some new features like for example ability to simple rebind have three transmitters bound to the same receiver and stuff like that which honestly it's not that very appealing to me. I usually do not have such a problem and um, I never really had a need to have those multi-binding features and stuff like that. But maybe, who, who am I to know about stuff like that? So there is not a firmware yet for the access protocol, but Eversky says that in the future all the X-series uh, receivers and transmitters, including the ones built into the radius like you see over there, will be able to upgrade to new to use the new protocol. Of course, after upgrading, you will not be able to use receivers on transmitter from the previous generation protocol called ACCST. So, how this will work, nobody knows. Oh, the feature, you will be able to transmit 24 channels, but that does not mean you will be able to use 24 channels in the, in the flight controller, for example, because SBUS can transmit only 16. So, anyhow, we will see how it's gonna end up. Next! Um, Good news, actually pretty good news and one of the really amazing features you will be able to see in the INAV 2.2 that will happen somewhere mid of here is INAV Radar. What's INAV Radar? Mm, it's something that will allow you to see on the OSD where other airplanes or drones in your neighborhood are. Of course. This will require uh, some additional hardware, like the ESP LoRa module with the extra board connected to a serial port of the flight controller communicating with each other, and you will be able to see on the, on the OSD where your colleagues are. So, for example, formation flying or chasing will be much, 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 much simpler. It's almost like this, how it's called? Um, yeah, the system that shows you uh, airplanes in the in the neighborhood. It's not our like the full time job. It's not a job I have developers doing. It's the guys from the ESP32 radar or INAF radar project. They made the hardware. They made the software for the hard. Oh, they made the software for the hardware for the ESP board and made some changes with the help from Olivier C and. The pull request for this thing is finally in the repository of INAV, so yeah. I, this is really something I would like to check one day because this looks really, 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 really awesome. Next, uh, beta flight point for, for beta flight 4.0. Maybe it will happen next week. Who knows? The date, uh, at least I'm not in the inner circle of beta flight, so I have no idea. The previously... Um, announced, unofficially announced date was the 1st of April, then I've heard something that there are some bugs, it might be delayed, but nevertheless, the first few release candidates for the beta flight 0.40 are out, probably the bugs were found, the bugs were fixed, so we are almost there. I already mentioned one of the things that beta flight 4.0 will introduce. It's the RPM filter. The other thing is a complete change how the beta flight will manage new targets, new boards. Because the number of boards is so big, everyone wants to have its own board and new target, it's a mess, blah, 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 blah. So they will have something called the unified target. That means the MCU, uh, the processor, for example, unified target M4, and then in the configuration, you will be able to decide uh, which pin goes where, what dies. So 
it should kind of simplify the process of creating new boards compatible with Betaflight 4.0. I have no idea, it's hard to pronounce for me. Uh, is this related to INAV? Not so much. We, let's say, are observing where it's gonna evolve. We still do not have the resource mapping for various reasons, by the way. But possibly this will be a, a nice thing that will finally solve the problem of having so many targets. Oi! Next! Um, yes, let's go back to INAV and let's talk about INAV and F7 processors. Yes. Up to INAF 2.1, F7 were, let's say, not very performant. You were really unable to run the 8 kHz loop on the F7 uh, board, while it was 100% possible on the F4 board, as long as the magnetometer and barometer on I2C were not used, because but this is a completely different story. The optimizations. Mm, it's all about optimization. We never really optimized the INAF to work with F7. From Since the beginning of this year, I've been personally porting changes made by Die Hertz to Betaflight last year into INAF with, with huge help of Andre. Thank you, Andre, for, for solving the problem with uh, copying re memory regions left to right. And, but bottom line, bottom line with INAF 2.2, F7s will be as fast, maybe even slightly faster than the F4 processors. Why? Because we, we, okay, I moved uh, memory regions to a faster memory and some code into the faster code memory that F7 has, which is actually a pretty, pretty, pretty good news. Next, um, yeah, do you know that Russians decided to put a drone into space? Yeah, it's not really <laughs> RC hobby related news, but it's the drone news for sure. To make things fully, fully transparent, it's not a drone that will be really flying through space. The Russians are putting a propeller, a propelled drone, yeah, with motors and propellers into the ISS International Space Station to test how this thing will be behaving with zero gravity. Because if you think about this, our drones are flying only because of the gravity. If you take the gravity out of the equation, you will not be able to achieve flight like that because there will be no force pulling the drone down and you to fly in this direction, you would have to tilt the drone and then only apply some, some trust. So it's a, it's a very interesting thing. Too bad that no one, I'd, at least I haven't found any images, the pictures of this um, space drone anywhere. Well, 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 too bad, too bad, too bad. And uh, originally my plan I said that this is where I should end, but I will not end over here. You remember Dominic Clifton, the guy behind the Clean Flight and the SP Racing company that gave us SP Racing F3, F4 and F7 Dual and so so. Now, thanks to him, mostly thanks to him, yeah, thanks to him, we will have uh, new toys. Mm, the toys flight controller based on the H7, the simplest H7 uh, STM H750 MCUs that, surprise, surprise, the software for them will be written on the SD card, not in the flash. So you will not be actually flashing the uh, CPU, you will be saving the firmware on one of the partitions of the SD cards. Why? Because H7 have very, very, very limited flash memory, only 120, at least this H7 750 has a very limited flash memory, only 128 kilobytes, so you cannot fit Betaflight over there, but you can put it on the, on the uh, SD card and it should work. How? I don't know yet, I do not have any samples or anything like that, but this is really kind of interesting idea. In theory, they should be cheaper than the current F7, because H750 is cheaper than uh, F722, which has more flash. Let's see how the market will react to that and if the other manufacturers will follow with H7 um, 
CPUs. Who knows? Maybe. Who knows? Like always, you never really know how the market will be reacting to that. Okay, and with that happy news, this is really all for today. Until the next one. Bye-bye.